and it's official. Class has begun. Go turn that off. Oh, I don't know what broke on that, and now it doesn't work. But whatever. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right. 80 clicks later, I am ready to rock. Are you all ready to rock? Let's do this thing. Let's put that right there. Because I everything's gone in my house. Like I already announced in the class. I get to move tomorrow, which who doesn't love to move, especially when it's raining out when you're supposed to be packing your U-Haul. But <laughs> right, but uh, I don't have anything to like hold. So everything's like on the ground or or around. But like my this still looks normal to everyone. But you could only imagine what the chaos over there looks like. It, it looks like a hurricane hit. So we're gonna just keep it focused right here. All right, welcome everyone to Thursday. Another fun lecture. I'm sorry I left you all last week, but I am back as promised. Promise I won't leave you again at least for next lecture. I think I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna be here and the next one. And then maybe after that one, I might ditch, I don't know. But happy to see everyone's smiling faces. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is model validation. Model, val val model validation. But first, as always, we actually have a quite a bit of announcements. Like I said, I have a lot of stuff for you guys because I missed you so much that I have so many presents. All right, first thing, first thing, first thing, please listen up if you're gonna listen to anything. For next class, you're going to need MySQL. Please download MySQL prior to class. Why do I say that? Because I'm pretty sure this is the, you thought you had troubles in the past. I've never heard so many troubles with people downloading MySQL. So please get on that ASAP. If you can't get it downloaded, reach out to a fellow colleague, reach out to your TAs, reach out to your TS, anybody, reach out to me. Please, please, please get on the ball to at least download this. You don't even have, to, I promise you don't even have to look at the exercise. Just download the software and I'll be happy. But also, please look at the exercise. All right. Next thing. Next. If you didn't get enough of me during this lecture, because again, I ditched on Monday, we're going to be doing a live studio review tonight at 8.30 p.m. to go over validation. Thank you, Timothy, for posting that. Um, yeah, live studio tonight at 8.30. If you can't make it, because I know 8.30 gets a little late, feel free to check out the recorded version that I'll have uh, most likely tomorrow morning. All right. Next thing's next, get assignment number three read. That sentence does not make sense at all because I was editing a past lecture, but what it's supposed to say, and I'll translate Kyleisms here, get assignment number three at least read because it is due on the 25th. I also forgot the word on there. So it's gonna be due the 25th. Please at least start looking at that, but SQL is gonna be playing a role in it. So we still have to learn that to get concepts there, but it doesn't hurt to take a look. All right, and then final things, final. First reminder of Studio 19, remember that you have four assignments and then one graded studio. That studio is Studio 19. We haven't really learned too many concepts. Of course, all of this will snowball into what you need for Studio 19, but this is a, just a reminder that that is going to be necessary in order to cross the finish line and to lift off from launch code. All right, that is all the announcements you get for today. Any questions from you all before we start hopping into things? Actually, Kyle, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, what's going on? Um, on the MySQL, when it, you do download it, it, does it say MySQL Workbench? Or is yeah. there more to it after that? No, no, it should be MySQL Workbench. Yeah, I, I okay, say cool. MySQL for short, but yeah, MySQL SQL work, 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 yeah, MySQL Workbench. <laughs> Got it. Awesome. Studio 19 doesn't have submit link on Canvas. Um, for that, reach out to Greg or your TA. I don't exactly know what the what the protocol with Studio 19 is. Whenever I was going through Mentor, there was a link for it, but it was a check mark to make sure because your TA will grade it. There's a little check mark um, that they have to click, but I don't remember what the new system that they, they changed to. So yeah, reach out to, um, to your TA first and then Greg if they don't have an answer. All right. Any other questions? Anything at all? And also Studio 19 so far out there, I just want to give you guys a heads up that maybe they don't have it on there yet, giving them benefit of the doubt, so. All right, who's ready for some old fashioned questions? Of course, I got to start out with questions. I don't want to talk too much. I want to hear what you all have to say. I haven't heard those voices in forever. But let's talk about the fun things in life. Let's talk about errors. 
I'm going to bring up this right here, this try thing with some stuff in there. Now, if I ran this, I'm going to get an error that says, try without catch final or resource declarations. What the heck is going on here? What do I need? What am I missing to make this error go away? Catch. Catch. Good. I like that. Catch. Fine. We can start there. What else do we need? Yes. Final. X, yeah. We need, I heard, I think, exception. We needed something inside of those parentheses. So it should be try catch. And then inside of the parentheses of the catch should be what we want to catch, which is an exception, AKA those errors that we'll get. And then of course, after that, we can print it out saying, oh no, something happened. Or you can use that error to do something. Cool. So yeah, we needed a catch there. Let's move on. If I have this right here, public string show my page, return my page. We've seen this quite a bit now for the past two lectures, but I'm going to get back a 404 error, page not found, if I try to go to this page. What am I missing here? If I get a 404. The uh, annotation. It's in one annotation if I'm getting a 404. The uh, get mapping. The get mapping. A 404 means there was oh, nothing that... found. There was no, nothing to visually see. So when you see a 404, that means there's nothing to go to, AKA there's no get mapping. So great, absolutely, the get mapping, fantastic. You guys are on a roll, let's keep going here. Public string foo, and then I got some cool little open for loop here. But when I put this in my code, I get a red line down here over this little, um, over this curly bracket. I was thinking about where am I going with this? Oh yeah, I don't know now. Why exactly am I getting this air here? <laughs> <laughs> As I already showed the answer. No, uh, return. The return. <laughs> I'm missing a return. I was like, do I have one more thing? I don't. Very good. But it's okay because this still keeps going here. I'm still missing an air. Or no, sorry. One more thing over here. There we go. Cannot <laughs> In this bit of code right here, I have a function called bar, a string name, an age, and then a for loop, and I can't resolve the simple age. What am I missing there? Int age. Int Again, age. I'm missing int age. Fantastic. But I'm still going to be getting an error here. I'm missing one more thing. What else am I missing? Semicolon after finished. Exactly. People were probably thinking it could it be that, that easy. <laughs> it was that easy. Yes. When you see an error like this with just a little pointy bracket about uh, after that. This just means that, hey, you're missing a semicolon there. And Java is a stickler on the semicolon. So very, very good. Awesome job, everyone. All right, we bring in this here. We're gonna get require Boolean provided string. What's going on here? You have to declare the data type. Your return type. The there we go. Okay, I heard it now. Yeah, we're our return type. When we get required Boolean provided string, it's telling us that we're returning the wrong data type. Take a look at the return type of check name. It's Boolean. But take a look at our return statements as they're returning strings. It's going to be a mismatch and Java is going to be very, very angry. So that being said, we're going to get this error. So we just need to change these to a Boolean. We need to change it to true and false. All right. Very good, everybody. That was awesome. Gosh, I missed that. I know it's only been like a few days, but I'm still like, oh, I get all giddy. I'm like, I'm excited to see everybody. Um, all right, any questions before we keep going? Anything about those errors? Anything at all? All right, let's keep going. Today is gonna be one of those days that at the first part of the lecture, we're gonna have a little bit of a chit chat. We need to really just talk about where you're going. So yeah, as always, you guys have been working hard. You know you're gonna become developers because everyone in here is awesome. But once you become developers and go into corporate, you're going to start entering into the real world of developers. And when we get there, one thing we really wanna talk about is our trust issues. As a developer, I don't trust anyone or anything when I'm developing. The only thing I truly trust, maybe a little bit, is myself and what I'm coding. Of course, I still also have some issues with that too, some trust issues. So as a developer, you have a lot of trust issues. So first things first, never, ever, ever 
trust a user. We are all human. Whether or how perfect we think we are or not, we do make mistakes. And your user will also make mistakes, even though it might be the most simplistic of applications we always have to assume that the user is going to use it incorrectly somehow. There are what, 7 billion people in the world? If you have a public application, the chances are that everything will go wrong. I forgot what that law is, but yes, everything that can go wrong will, and especially in coding development. So never trust a user, always double check, and make sure that you're covering as many edge cases that you can to protect, their use, protect your user from making issues. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today and how we can do that. But one more thing I wanna talk about is that, okay, don't trust your user, but you're still going to be, thank you, Murphy's Law, that's what I was thinking of. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Murphy's Law, awesome. Not just people you have to worry about, but, the things that run our applications can also be untrustworthy because they were created by humans in the first place or maybe just de like faulty machines. What I'm talking about is that we never want to trust unvalidated data. We should never trust data that is just coming into our application as is. Even if it's coming from the most perfect source that you see, again, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So when you're out there in the real world, never, ever, ever, take for granted that a user is going to use your application correctly or information coming in your application is going to be correct. You should only trust what you've checked on your side. Anything that has gone through your own type of validation or validating that information or what the user is inputting should be trusted. You should only trust what you have checked or what you have built to check that information. And to do that, like I said, we're going to do validation, but we're going to be doing server-side validation. And this right here is our saving grace. We're going to be checking all that data, not necessarily on um, the front end or anything like in our forms, but we're going to be checking it in the back end or, like I said, the server side. So what are all these words I'm talking about? We've covered it once or twice before, but let's go ahead and go into depth just a little bit more about what I'm talking about, where our validation or our protection that we're going to be creating today actually exists. You've seen this diagram before. We have two sides to the majority of our applications. We have a UI, what the user sees, and we have our Spring Java application that's on the back end. When you're in your application right now on the website, the UI, when you're interacting with it, will send over requests to our Spring Java application, our controllers, and then we'll send back a response. Nothing new here, you've seen this. When you're interacting with the screen, interacting with a web page, we call that the client side. That is the client side, and I will refer to it probably quite often as client side, and you'll hear that a lot in the workplace and probably online as well or within this, these lectures or within the uh, book itself. And on the other side, we have our Spring Boot application where our controllers live. We call this the server side. You also hear it called the back end here once in a while too. So front end can also be client side and back end can be server side. Now don't get too much into that. Just know that our client side is our UI, what we see, and our server side is where all that validation, all the heavy lifting of that information takes place. We do that also because we don't want, we want our UI to be as lightweight as possible. I mean, if you have a heavy application that's running a bunch of algorithms on your browser, that's going to slow down your computer and it is not going to be a good day and your computer's going to overheat and just a whole big mess. So today we're going to talk about how exactly to do that validation on the server side. So let's go ahead and we're going to bring in an example here for this lecture. And as always, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm going to be ranting here for just a bit. So feel free to put those questions out in the lecture questions channel, and I will definitely stop and check those. All right. So let's just talk about a typical, um, a typical situation. We have a get request. And as always, we're going to be working with our pet store uh, Spring Boot application today. So we're going to have this dog slash create route. And what that's going to do is it's going to send a request. Now, I know I wasn't here last week. Again, I apologize. But typically in that last lecture, we create a small little form that adds a dog to a dog data object, basically to remember all of our dogs. But you've done that in assignment two, 
um, to help out with remembering those job information. So we're gonna send a request from our dog create, and we'll see this example here in a little bit. But what's gonna happen is that when we send out that get, we typically get back a response because our controller is going to respond back to us. And what that does is it's gonna build a page. You know this, you know a get mapping builds a page to something visual. And what we're gonna have in that create form is just this cute little text box and a create button. So as always, we're going to just type in Stark, we're gonna click that create. And then what that happens, what happens after we click create is we send back a post request. So when we do a post, it will send the information back to the controller. But the situation that I want to explain here is that what if, or so we have some back start here as the request back to our uh, controller. And then there in that controller, what we're going to do is validate it. We'll say it's all good and it comes back in response. So this is a typical situation. You've seen this before. We're going to send Stark over. We do something with the name Stark. Best dog name out there, in my personal opinion, sends back a response. We do something with that response. Let's switch up the situation though. What if we get back that page again, we get back that text box and that create, but instead of typing in Stark, we just click the create button. We click that create button. So the same thing's gonna happen. We're still gonna do a post, but what's gonna happen is that we're gonna send over something a little weird. We're gonna send over a request with name equal to null. Now, when you're trying to create a dog and you're creating a dog without a name, that is not correct. Therefore, what just happened is that our user was able to send over bad data. And when this happens, we can get back a response, but sometimes we can also get an explosion on our server side saying that something bad happened. What we're trying to get out here is that we should not allow our users to send over null for our dog name, AKA we should not let them send over bad information. What we should do is tell them or reject what happened on the server side. So what this all means and what we're boiling it down to, so we need to validate this. That's what we're gonna be working with today. So we're gonna to try to validate our information that comes from our forms, from our user, that data on our server side. So in order to do that, we are gonna to need to start building our favorite companion. But before I do that, I see Abdul, you asked where these slides were located. It is on the Google Drive. If someone has that Google Drive link, I don't have access to it just right now. I can post it after lecture, but um, they're all on there if you'd like to see them. Um, yeah, if any TA has that access to the Google Drive, I think it's also in our past chats, but it might've been deleted because we don't get, get 10,000 in the free version. I see one more person typing there. Oh, I have allergies. I will. Kyle, I assume clicking the submit button with nothing in the text box would submit an empty string, but you said it was null. Good question. I don't know exactly know what. Oh, thank you, Kevin, for posting that. Um, I don't exactly know what it would do with Spring Boot. Some applications will send back an empty string, I'm assuming by default. Still an empty string is technically not valid and kind of what I was getting at for that. But um, it might be an empty string and it, it might be null, but you, you might be correct. We, we're actually gonna see that here in a few seconds. So we'll see if it goes empty string by default or goes by null. What I'm concerned about is how it is, interacts with the model. So speaking of that, great transition. Thank you for that. We're gonna start building our model. So go ahead and how do we start building our dog model? Who can tell me what do we need to start with? What is a model and how are we gonna start creating it? It's a class. It's a class, very good. So how do I create a class then? Public class, dog model. Dog, very good. It's gonna be public class dog. We don't usually put model in the names. We just say the, the name of the model. So dog, cat, parrot, uh, job, et cetera. So there we go. How do I provide my dog model a name? I'm gonna miss these ambulances going by every five seconds. How do I- Variable? 
a variable very good. Talk me through. We are in a class right now. How do I create a class variable? What area do you live in? Now, right now, uh, we'll talk about that at the very end. But I, like I need to turn my scanner this. on. <laughs> All right. So Is it we're on. Blue dog? It's string dog name. Private. It's private string dog okay. name. Do we need private? Thank you. Yes. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead. Getting a little bit of background noise there. All right. So yes, you are absolutely correct. It is private string name. Remember, when we are creating class variables, they must be private. So to create a name for our dog, we have to go private string name. So that is creating a name for our dog. If you're going to do a cat, you can do the same way. Any kind of class variable, remember, starts with private data type and then whatever the variable is going to be. <laughs> Moving on. What three more things do we need? We have our class variables. What's the next thing that we need after our class variables for this? Constructor. 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 Very good. So we're gonna. I'm gonna give that one right to you. Public dog string name. But inside the constructor, I want to initialize my class variable. So what am I gonna put there? This dot name. Very good. This dot name equals name. Fantastic. All right. Who can guess what the next two things we need for this? Agent. We have our getters and setters. Getters and setters. Getters and setters. Very good. I, I knew that was a little misleading. No, not any more uh, any more details about our dog. But yes, we need that getter. So we have the get name, and then the set name there. So very good. So we have our class variables at the top, constructors second, and then our methods third. In this case, we're doing those getters and setters. After that, all other <laughs> methods we need for our dog. In this case, we're not going to be using any. Awesome job, everyone. All right, lucky for you all too, just to save us a little bit of time, what I did is that I created our dog already right under here. So what we do under our pet store or whatever your Spring Boot application is, we have a new package of <coughs> models, and then we have dog here. So we double click dog, this is what our dog class looks like. So this has been pre-created for us, just to save us a little bit of time. All right, let's hop back. Excuse me. Okay. So we already said that when we send over that name into our dog class as our dog model, we don't want it to be empty string. We don't want it to be null. How exactly can we actually place some protection around those names? And the answer is, is that luckily Spring Group, Spring Boot provides some validation for us. That being annotations that assist us. So I don't want this name to be null. I would say at null, meaning that never make this model, this dog's name ever equal to null when they're trying to set it coming from timely for from our HTML. Another one too is that not blank. Maybe I don't want empty string in there. So going back to your, to your original question mark, it could be the blank string or the null, but we wouldn't want either in this regard. So really good to put both of these typically. So these annotations are something that provides validation, protection against bad data coming from outside of our application. That's what we're trying to protect ourselves against. Now, these annotations also have an entire big family. Some of those that you see, we already have those not, name, or not blank and not null, but other ones out there too are size, Size is just saying how big to how small I want something. Then of course we have min and max. So how small do I want something? Don't, or it has to be this, or what was it? What would it be? It has to be at least to this point, your minimum amount of characters or numbers or something like that to be valid. And maximum is, okay, how big do you want it to that exact limit? So that is your min and max. And then the other ones is assert true and assert false, meaning this has to be true or this has to be false in order for it to be valid. So looking at all these annotations, these are out there to help you. So what I was kind of mentioning beforehand, there's a lot of annotations out there. It's not entirely too complex because it can be, um, it can be slightly obvious about what they, what they are entailed for, but you can add them to those, but there are a ton of them. So let's just go in and dive into one of them right now. Let's go in and dive into size. Now for size, if I just want to do that, we would provide this annotation, but it has some things within itself. We actually have some parameters. 
So inside of there, we would have a minimum of one. Maybe we want to make a maximum of 10. And then we would have a message basically saying if we're outside of that range, then we would actually want to display some kind of error saying your dog name is too long or something like that. This size right here is typically for strings. The other one is at min. This one has a value or so you can also set the parameters in this one. So in this one, you could say value equals one. And then for this one, you also would set the message for error message here. So whatever you want that to be. So this is how you can kind of use those annotations. The min right here is for numbers. So like I said, there's a lot of things to these validations where you can use them, where you can't. We're gonna be seeing some examples, but if you want to see anything additional, feel free to visit the link or the additional documentation on all these validations through JavaX. It, will, it really does help. So that is the validation annotations in a nutshell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead of over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and place this in there. So if I wanted to have this not be an empty string, what annotation would I use? Who would who tell, who can tell me that? Not no. No, like, not empty. Now, if I don't want it to be a blank right. string, what, not you blank. could do not null, sorry, go ahead. Not, not blank. Very good, not blank. So we would say not blank if we wanted it to not be an empty string. I think I'm missing my, yep, I gotta go get that. And then not null, if I want it to be not null, very good. And I knew what was gonna be missing this. I have to go ahead and grab that. Da, 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 da. You have to import it? I do have to import it. Yes, you get to all see me freak out. I was like, oh no, where is that in the importation? Da, 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 da. Does Chris put it on here? I think he does. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. Come on, you're gonna make me go get it? All right, fine. Okay. What anybody have that um have the uh dependency by any chance around? Isn't it? jvax.validation.constraints. Where am I looking at? I'm looking at build. Um, was it a dependency in the implementation? No, it didn't have us add a dependency. It, like we had to import it. That's right. Oh my gosh, I forgot all about that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we had to import the jar, right? That jar file is that the is that the one? Um, text. It just said that you import what was it? Java Java X dot something dot validation at the top of your class. There we go. Oh no, I needed this guy. Thank you very much, Robert. We actually needed implementation. Go fantastic. That's what I need. But you're also correct. We also need to import at the top. But before we can import anything, we have to make sure we have the library. So let me go ahead and refresh my Gradle real quick, and then we should be able to import it. So if we come over here, well, it's importing like catching in time. It will not have to do what I want, dog, right? So it says cannot resolve symbol not blank. It doesn't even have any idea what I'm talking about. Beforehand, we can usually say import class. It's because we need to bring in that library. Just gotta wait for my computer to stop having a case of the Mondays. There we go. All right, now you're indexing, so there we go. Look at that, now we change it to import class. That's what I like to see. I'm gonna do that one. Fantastic. All right. Thank you again, Robert. I was like, I don't know why they, they hide that one. It's like the last one I need and they always hide it. I should just remember dash validation. It's always one of those. All right. Cool, cool. So now we have our validations there above our class variable. Now remember, this, check out this placement. It's above the class variable of the model. Above the class variable of the model. 
So that is the correct placement for that. All right, so we provided the validation for the dog, but we're still not using the dog model. So let's move a little bit forward so we can actually see an example of this val validation at work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna keep talking. So we need to move on a little bit further here. We need to now have something to use our dog model. So we're gonna build a dog controller. How do I begin doing that? And I know you all know this one. Don't make me call someone out. I will right now. I got a lot of energy. Add controller. That's the annotation. I'll give you that because that is a very important part. But to start building dog Help controller, we need to build class. a class for the dog controller mm -hmm. in the first place. Our starting point is always building the class for these things. So yes, public class dog controller. And then very good, absolutely right, at controller. This will transform this class into something very special. That controller. Uh, is the master of those requests and responses. All right, let's keep going. So I'm gonna give you this public string create a dog. How do we build a method though for a post request for the route dog slash create? What do we need to add to this method? Post mapping. Post mapping. Very good, post mapping. I, I will keep you here, I will keep you all here till eight o'clock if you don't talk to me. Post mapping, very good, absolutely, dog slash create. And then what we need to do is that, how do I add the dog class as a parameter? Remember dog being the model. What do we add? Now this will tell me if you all were paying attention to this class. Yes. I think I heard it. I heard I heard two people. Request param. It's not request param. So we're taking it in as a parameter, but remember if a model is being used as a parameter, we use a different model kind of attribute? annotation. Very good, model attribute. Model attribute, yes. okay. Model attribute, we're gonna say, yeah, we're gonna be taking in parameters, but it be, should be in the shape of a beautiful dog. <laughs> so very good, model attribute, then dog, dog. We're telling it what model to use. Use dog there. So let's go ahead and make this real quick in our IntelliJ. Just for you all, I already created or started our dog controller. I have a git mapping for our dog slash create, but I don't have a post mapping yet. So I'm gonna do that post mapping. And we said create for this. There we go, and I actually said create for this one too. I almost forgot it. All right, public string, and it is, I'm gonna say save a dog for this because I already have create dog up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what was the annotation that I needed to use when I wanted to pass in a model as a parameter? Model attribute. attribute. Very good, model attribute. And then I need to actually use the name of the model. In this case, it's dog and then dog. There we go. Import class, fantastic. And so we are well on our way to be creating this very advanced post mapping. Let's keep going. All right. Where do we store our data that's shared between controllers? Now, I know I wasn't here for this, but I do want to hear what any, or where do we exactly keep all that information that's stored between things that are talking back and forth? What is it called? Anybody know? What layer? Data layer. Very good, the data layer, absolutely. So in this case, the data layer we're going to be talking about, we're going to call it the dog data. So you might have seen this in your assignment too. This is our dog data layer here. But for, of course, it's not the job data layer, it's the dog data layer. In this case, we're gonna have a dog data layer that's able to save these dogs and be able to talk between controllers. And one of those methods is add dog and we pass add dog in there. So this is how we're gonna be talking between those controllers. We come over here and yes, again, you guessed it right. I created dog data for us beforehand. This is the code for it. And basically, we have it here in a static. Oh, I need to actually create all these static. My bad. We're doing static because we want this information to persist between controllers. So we do that. There we go. So we're going to go back over to dog control here. And the thing we said is dog data. Dot add dog. We're going to add that nice little dog there. There we go. All right. One last thing here. 
how would I redirect the page to a page called show? Anybody got an idea for that one? If I wanted to redirect after they added that dog to show, who knows what that would look Return, like? Return, redirect. Return, redirect. Colon slash show. I love it. That is exactly right. Yes, ret redirect colon slash show. This will take us back to show. Now, if you just leave it redirect colon there, it will take you back to the home page, whatever that normal slash is. In this case, we want to go to a specific page. So we say slash show. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to go ahead and return that. And we're going to say redirect to slash show. Fantastic. There we go. All right, we have created our dog controller. Awesome job, everyone. This is what it's going to look like for right now. But we have been talking about that this is kind of dangerous because right now what we're doing is that we're just trusting any information that's coming to this controller saying like, hey, okay, your dog model's fine. I don't care if you didn't name it anything or maybe a terrible name. Add it to my data. Bring it on in. We don't like that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to be adding some validation to this. So that being the case, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go and just return it to uh, another page called show one dog. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, just for this example here. And I already created show one dog, show one dog here previously and all it does, and we'll see what it does here in a second, but it's just in the dogs files. So I'm going to say dog here. There we go. So that's going to be right in here. Show one dog HTML. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and back and see what we need to do with this. So in this show one dog HTML, all it is is a very simplistic one. So we're bringing in time leaf and we're just saying the dog you added is, and then it has a th text injection saying this is the dog name you added. Plain and simple, easy peasy. But one thing I wanted to point out is that if we um, is that inside of our post controller, if we wanted to actually return to this page, is that we didn't actually have to add that dog at, or that dog data as an attribute. Did anyone notice that? That's what I really wanna talk about right now. If we go over to the HTML here, we're gonna actually see if we can get this working. So all we're doing is adding the dog data, or all we add, we're adding the dog to the dog data, but we're not actually passing this dog in here into the model using that model add attribute. All we're doing is hoping it's there. So what exactly is going on? Let's go ahead and try this and see if it works. Show one dog, make sure everything is actually working. There we go, see if there's any errors. We're gonna see what happens here. Okay, cool. And while that's happening, feel free to ask any questions or anything that you wanna see additionally. Before we keep going. All right, I'll start it up here. Move that down so I can actually see. Localhost 8080. Awesome. I don't think I have a home page. I do have a home page. Cool, cool, cool. Slash dog slash create. All right. All I'm going to do is create a dog. In this one, I'm going to just say Stark as always. Press create. Oh, dog, dog. Great. I don't want that. My bad, because I'm already in the dog controller. That makes sense. My bad. I'm sorry, Spring Boot. That's gonna do that. And Kyle, that was because the request mapping is that dog already at the top of the class. This is a 404. Oh my gosh. I am. No, no, I am. Nope. Nope. That is incorrect. I was like, that does not correlate. All right. No, that is because that's going to be in my HTML here for our ad dog. I'm going to the wrong action. Um, that's going to be in the create.html. I'm going to the wrong action here because we're already in the dog. We don't need to append dog to the action. So I was, I was, so remember action is pointing to where that post mapping that you want to hit actually lives. And I know that it was appending an extra dog up here because if we highlight this as an extra dog in there. So this is how I brought it back to is probably that action that's sending it to the wrong link. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save that. 
there. Okay, cool. Stop that. Refresh. So right now, hypothetically, this is the culprit. Let's go and restart this. Insert awkward silence. Well, the server starts up. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. Enter. There we go. We'll say start again. Press create. And now we're getting something fun. Showing dog. Let's see here. Is it really? I was like, there's no way I have to do that. I created this wrong here. Because time leaf's always weird. I have to pen my string inside of the curly brackets, which I don't understand their annotations for that. So what I did is I just edited the string to actually be appended inside of there. So we just do all of that right there instead. Okay, perfect. If you're wondering like, how did I know that? Because trial and error, lots of trial and error before this. And I was like, there's no way I have to do that. There we go. Name Stark. Well, that doesn't look pretty, but we still bringing it back to what I was trying to get at here. We were able to provide that information, that dog model to our template without using model dot add attribute. So we were able to do that because of something special that time or that spring helps us out with. So what happens was is that we this is our controller right now. So we have this data dog or the dog data dot add dog, and then we have okay return show one dog, and what that does is it just shows us our template. But what you don't see, and what can be a very confusing concept because you don't see it, at least for myself, I don't like all the, the, uh, the, the magic behind the scenes here. But what happens is, is that underneath our dog model is auto baked into the template. So our dog model is actually already there. We don't have to re add it to our model.add attribute. It's going to be there for us. So you might see this wondering how is this data actually getting there? When this template is being built, dog is just attached to it. So you'll often see this in a post request. You won't see the model.add attribute unless you have to. So this, I kind of want to lift the hood off of this because I get a lot of questions about this from, from past classes. So I really like to express that why the dog or why your templates don't have to be, or your models don't have to be pushed to the template is because they're automatically done so. All right. Any questions about this one? Hey, yeah, I got one, Kyle. Could you yeah. maybe in the uh, in the IDE kind of write out what exactly the at model attribute replaces? That way we can see what's no longer necessary with that annotation. Yeah. Beforehand, remember we always did. Um, we always had model here beforehand. So you've seen this in the past two classes. I'm not going to bring a model right now because I don't want to mess up the, or well, let's go ahead and do it just in case. There you go. So what we would typically do is we'd say model dot add attribute, and then we'd say dog, and then we'd say, okay, pass in dog, please. This line right here is no longer necessary because our model attribute is baked into the template for us. Now, don't always assume that everything is baked in there. If it doesn't show up, it might not be, but your models are baked in by default. Got it. So this Thank you. That helps a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So that line is no longer necessary. Cool, cool. And I like to be fully transparent about where my knowledge gaps lie. Uh, like I said, when it comes to Spring Boot and Timely, I do have an understanding and grasp about most of it, but these little quirks and everything, I learn as I mature in this as well, and I'm happy to share them as much as I can, but you might also stump me with a question as, as they come forward. So I will try to my best ability to answer anything I can. If not, I'll point you in the right direction. All right. Awesome job, everyone. Let's keep on going. Don't say any more typing. All right. Let's go ahead. And one thing I also want to call out. So, okay, we were able to go to that page. Dog was baked in. Everything's honky dory. Let's go back to that original thing. We were returning redirect colon slash so, show. Remember that? It's about five, 10 minutes ago. When we do that, it still goes back to our show.html page, showdogs.html. But one thing I want to tell you about is that, okay, I told you already two seconds ago that dog's going to be baked in. Well, when you redirect, that's not correct. 
if you redirect to a page, your models that you passed in as parameters are no longer accessible. That's because your browser basically got rid of all that information when you redirected to a page. If you're just rendering it typically like you do in Timely, but just in the quotes without the redirect, then it stays consistent inside of there. So if you redirect, those parameters do not stick around. All right, so any questions about that? Anything at all? Everyone feeling 100% feeling about it? Feeling great? All right. Let's keep going. Okay. I was really hoping there was a question. It's like, I just need to take a break. I'm just like, okay. But all right, instead of that, let's go ahead and talk about getting only valid dogs. Let's bring in that validation. It's exactly what we wanted to talk about before. We're gonna bring in our dog controller, our post mapping here with our beautiful dog data, all of that. And what we're gonna do here is that we need to provide valid dog, um, valid, sorry, a valid dog model into this parameter. In order to do that, in order to work with this timely validation, we provide this annotation here at valid in front of our models. This will tell Spring Boot that you want dog to be valid. So that is exactly how we begin our validation for our model. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in right now. I'm going to take out model two while we're at it. I'm going to say at valid. Just like that. I'm going to import it. So again, this annotation here will tell Spring Boot, I want this model to be valid. Make sure before you give it to me. All right. So in our dog class, we've already added our annotations. We've added this not blank and not null. So when we say at valid, what it's going to do is say, okay, it's going to come in here. Is my name blank? Example given empty string. The next one's like, is the name null? If either of these are true, it's, or yeah, if either of these are not correct, it is not valid. So if it is null, if it is an empty string, this is a not a valid dog name. Therefore, something bad will happen. So the question you're probably asking is, what is that bad stuff that will happen if my stuff is not valid? And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Obviously, what's gonna happen? Yes, the world explodes. Errors will happen here. Errors always happen in coding. It's unfortunately a typical thing or an everyday thing. But luckily with these errors, it's good that it's chatty because it will tell us what's actually wrong. And it will tell us where it's wrong in two different places. And this is where we'll need to actually see what's going to be going on in these errors. So the first place is actually going to be within that controller itself. So after our model add attribute at valid dog dog, we need to actually understand what's going wrong. So what we do is we add in this other parameter called errors here. Now take a look at the signature. Why did we just add errors here? Again, it's just to let Spring Boot know to put everything that went wrong in the validation somewhere. And it's going to put it right there in errors. So some, if something's bound to go wrong, we need to know about it. We're the developer. We're responsible for the application. This is where it happens at. Errors. Now, this fun little thing that we just passed in our parameters, though, also has a lot of helpful methods with it. And is very powerful with our validation that we want to use in parallel. What am I talking about exactly? Is Essentially, if we want to check if there are any errors, we can utilize the errors parameter to check that. So take a look at this if statement here. We say if errors has errors. That right there is basically returning back or it's telling us whether or not it has errors. If not, we'll return back to the create form because something went awry. So we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and implement this now in our code. So if, oh. No, you know what, I'm gonna turn it over to you all because no one is talking to me. Oh, I also have not allowing anyone to talk right now because no one can unmute themselves. But, oh, now you can. If I wanna get errors back from my validation, what do I need to include and where? Um, errors, errors, error, 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 capital oh, error, error, errors. errors. Um, let me make sure. But yeah, it's plural. 
Yes, there we go. Very good. Yes, we're going to put it right here at the very end of our parentheses. Are you asking, is placement okay or wherever? No, make sure you're putting it at the very end of your method signature there. Awesome. I'm going to import that class. Fantastic. Now, if I wanted to check to see if any of my validation went wrong, what do I do? What am I going to put here? If. 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 Error has errors. Error, not has errors. Not has errors. Parentheses. Very good. Has errors. Fantastic. This will check to see if there's anything that went wrong. If there return were. Return dog. You want to return dog or you want to return them back to the form. It might be to the job creation form. It might be whatever form you want or just to an error page saying you messed up. You're not allowed in my application anymore. But in this case, we're going to just return it to the dog slash creates page here. Very good. But if everything went fine, then we're okay to add the dog into our dog data. That's a good dog name. And then we'll just return to show that dog that they created, which I'm gonna actually make it look a little nicer. Uh, there we go. Leave it there for a second. So this is how we add errors and see what's actually going wrong in our validation inside of our controllers. But as you know, this only happened in one place. So, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and stop this. I do want to show you all what actually happens when we go through it. And also to make sure that everything is working correctly. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And while that's happening, I see one person typing for a question. Awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and hop over here. Go back to this create form. And now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just click create. As I see this, I just keep clicking create and I go right back to that form every single time. Look at that. And you know what's inside right now? And I'm like, deep breath, like, oh gosh, thank gosh it works. Because I was like, is it gonna work? I hope it's gonna work. All right. So errors is a class in the Spring Library. How did you find a list of methods in the errors class if it is a class? So what you can do is that I usually cheat by putting errors here and then dot, and then you get a list of all their helpful methods here. I know has errors because of, well, just previous knowledge. But if you ever want to see everything that's in a method, you just put a period there and just look through all of them. If anything, just click on one and see what, what it does. It's kind of fun. Just don't try to break your computer. But yeah, everything else, pretty great. So has errors is there, has field errors. We'll talk about fields here in a second. But has errors is the most gener generic one we want. If it has any errors at all, we don't want the form to continue. Wrong way. So we see that that works, but if we put start in here, we press create. Look at that, our dog name is just added, start, fantastic. Andrew, does that answer your question or did you wanna go any, uh, any further? <laughs> that works, okay, as long as it works. But if it doesn't, let me know. All right. Let's hop back. And we already talked about place number one. So let's go ahead and talk about place number two. Where else are our errors brought, provided? All right. So we're going to bring back that controller here. Now, remember when it says return dog, of course, in our example in the IDE, it says create, but just bear with me here. When we return dog, what happens is that we go to the template dog.html, aka create.html in the IDE. So we already know that the dog is baked into that template fantastic but did you know errors is also there with them so errors is also baked into your template as well so you don't have to pass that over into your template if you want to use it over there now you might be asking yourself okay why would i want to use my errors in my template well if you have errors in your in your form at all maybe you want to show a little bit of red showing the user exactly where their stuff went wrong so what we're going to do is that we're going to hop over to here. We're actually going to work with this. So we know that our errors is incorrect. So I'm going to introduce you all to a new TH thing. Well, not really new, new to us here in this lecture. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hoping IntelliJ comes up. There we go. In our inputs, what we can do is provide some information about what should be back in the form, providing information there, and possibly errors as well. So we're gonna start with using th field here. And then here we place what part of the dog belongs to this input. Oh, that scared me. 
All right. So it's a dog dot and then whatever this input belongs to. In this case, it's going to be name. We know it's name because the name is name. Just like that. And then this means that this field belongs to dog.name. So it is making a bond there to the model by saying this field belongs to that dog's name. But we already talked about that we want to do errors here. So that's what we're going to look at. So for that one, maybe I wanted to display a little bit of a paragraph in red. So we'll say style equals color of I know we talked about this in the studio, but I also, I haven't talked about it officially in lecture, but instead of just saying red, I'm gonna use the hexadecimal system. So to do red, I'm gonna do hashtag zero, uh, FF0000, which means full on red. Every color that you see, including myself on your screen and in any screen ever, all comes from these six hexadecimal digits. Anything you see visually, that's where all of our colors come from on our screens. So after that, we created our style. We just want it to be nice and red. We are going to now need to include the errors inside of here. So we say th errors, errors, yeah, errors equals, and then our dollar sign, and then where we're looking for the errors. Now you're not gonna use the keyword errors here. Instead, you're going to be looking specifically for a field within the dog model that went wrong. The field we're looking for in the dog model that went wrong is dog.name. So we're gonna say, hey, if there's anything inside of dog.name that went wrong, display it here in red. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Double check anything, there we go, good. wrong way. I always have a 50-50 chance of scrolling the wrong way and I do it every time. Not a day to buy a lottery ticket. All right. Uh, what did I do this time? What you talking about? Oh, do I have to add it to the, I do, I do, I do, I do. I've got one spot. Up here, so what's happening is that a get goes out and says, okay, I wanna go see the information, nothing changes there. But when we do a get, there's nothing being baked into this template that says have a dog object there. In the create, it's saying, hey, you need to have a dog object there. So what I need to do is that I need to go over to the dog controller and just make a fake one. So I'll just say model, oh, I need to create a model. Model, model. Sorry, so important. It is awesome, awesome model that add attribute. Let's just say dog, and then we're gonna say new dog. And as of right now, it's gonna be just empty string. There we go. Let me just put a null in there too and just make it really angry. Cool. There we go. Save that, stop that, rerun our thing. And let's try that again. Cool. All right, press enter again. There we go. Now we're getting that back. Let's go and press create. Oh no, what happened? Must not be blink. Look at that, our errors are coming back properly. Remember that whenever I have an error there, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show this exact error that it cannot be blank. So that right there is how we can actually display the errors within our application without having to pass over a lot of information because it's all auto-baked into our template. So isn't that great? So let's go ahead and just make sure that the correct way still works. So let's start there. So name equals Stark. Awesome. That's what I like to see. All right. So real quick, I'm going to open it up to any questions about any of that. Anything that you all would want to go over a little bit more in depth. 
So Kyle? Yeah, Mark. I'm, when I read this in the text, it seemed counterintuitive to me because I was expecting some sort of if conditional logic, like if there's an error, then display it, but the TH errors thing does some kind of magic that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. So can you go into that more? Yeah, so the TH errors, let me see if it actually even renders on a non error and that will give me more clarification around it. So let me go ahead and just go to a dog create and right click inspect. So I'm gonna, and so it only say, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna inject error text in there only if in the errors object, there exists an error for the dog dot name property. I know I said a lot there. So I'm, but I'm gonna see if it even renders. It doesn't even render. So it's technically, it's going to be an if statement. So it's only going to render that element if there is an error for that name in the dog model. So that's what this magic of this errors object is doing is that it's going to prepare errors for the dog object. Okay, so the conditional logic is built into TH errors. Correct, yes, TH okay. errors means render this with error text from the error object only if errors exist for this model for this. All right. Yes, All right. from what I'm, what I'm seeing, for documentation, for specifically what it's going for, go to the, um, the Spring Boots documentation but from what I have witnessed and what I've seen, that is how it's worked. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. Great question. Any other questions? Okay. Well, all my fun people, because we have a little bit of extra time here, what I'm gonna do is that I am going to go through just one thing I usually go through last class in this one, just to make sure that any future things that we go over coincide with my future lectures. And that's dealing with this dog data stuff. So we're gonna go over it kind of quickly, just because you already have gone on a lecture and I don't wanna be just talking about it again, but just to make sure, and also just to, I have to do this anyway on my end, so why not make you all have to watch it? All right, so as we know, dog data, this little dog data thing here persists between controllers, basically as a way to have sharing information between controllers. Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, once you shut down this data layer, or once you shut down your application, what happens to the data layer? All the data goes away. But while it's up and running, we can still do something with it. So. What we're going to do is that we're going to just on the create or on the index page, this one right here, this index.page, I think it's under your our cat controller, right? Yeah. So under index, I assume what we're going to just do is display all the dogs we've added. One of the greatest dog page. We're taking over. Dogs are taking over my, I'm going to say my list of dogs. There we go. And what we're going to do here, let's keep that there just for now. We're going to say dog. We're going to be passing a list of dogs into this thing. All right. So index.html is now going to build us a list of dogs from this dogs variable here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add dogs into my time leaf model. So all that information gets passed over to my home page. I'm gonna go over to the dog, or sorry, to the cat controller where our index is actually happening. Right now, we were, previously two lectures ago, we were passing this entire array list of cat names in there. And that's what was rendering on our front page. If we go over, we can actually see it real quick, just so we have a good old memory of it. Oh, not cat, just our homepage, there we go. Remember all this, we have Calico, Siamese, Persian. This is the list that was coming into the homepage as we were doing that. Well, that's cool and all, but I mean, we're hard coding this list in there. So that's kind of boring, honestly. Why don't we have our application allow us to add that list of dogs to our screen so we can actually see our list being built. Doesn't that sound fantastic, mind blowing, cool? Yeah, exactly. I think so. And that's all that matters because we're gonna do it. All right, so instead of a favorite cast now, because I just got rid of that hard coded cats list, I'm gonna say dogs here. And what I'm gonna do is call to that dog data object right there and say get all dogs now if you're asking yourself where did get all dogs come from 
like I said before, I kind of already created this prior to lecture. So this get all dogs, all it does is returns all of the dogs inside of my array list up here. Now, again, you might see it as all static. That's because we want this information to persist. We want it to persist between controllers. Remember, objects get created individually, but static things stay consistent via the class. So that's why we want to make it static. So going over to our index.html, that's where we need to go. Stop it. You, there we go. I think I have to get rid of this to not show one join. Oh, no, actually, we're fine there. So you have dogs going in there. Fantastic. Dog controller. Cool. All right. And now instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to go just to home page. I'm going to go to the home page. Because so I want to go and see my all my dogs. All right. Go and run that. All right, let's go and run. All right, cats. Slash dog slash crate. Was it? Yeah, dog slash crate. Awesome. I'm going to add start here. Create. What's wrong with you today? All right. Oh, because I'm trying to return. That's my fault. Because I'm trying to return uh, slash nothing there. I don't need to return index. There we go. We actually return a template. There we go. Stop that. Rerun. That was a brain fart right there. Go. Running, running, running. Awesome. Let's try this again. Dog slash create. We say Stark. I did not do what I wanted you to do. Let's see what we have to do here. Add dog. Index.html. We go. So pass in dogs into our index.html because I am rendering that template without even passing dogs into the template on my dog controller. I'm going to index, but I'm not actually passing in. attribute. Oh, that's because what I want to do is just redirect to the home page. That's what I want to do. Redirect to the home page. Thank you. There we go. This will also prove our models don't persist. All right. I was going to say, if you redirect, nothing should be there because we haven't added it to the model. But the data is persisting on the dog data layer. And that information persists as long as your application is running. We'll see that right here. Well, that's my bad because I forgot dog is an object. So I actually need to pass it in there. So let's go ahead and do it one more time. Go to our index HTML. There we go. Dog.name, please. So you are absolutely correct. Yes, our models technically would not be there anymore because they're not auto, or because nothing's auto baked once you redirect. But remember, dog data, your data layer in general, stays persistent as long as your application is running. I don't like a lot of cans. There we go. Slash dog slash create. Come back here. We type in Stark. Press create. And now we see start there. Let's see if we go to slash um, dog slash create. Someone give me a dog name. Anybody? Scooby. Scooby is. Scooby. There we go. Now we got Stark and Scooby. Look at that. So that information is persisting as long as our application is running on our data layer. This would have been what you saw last week. But instead, now you got validation and this this week. Two in one. Isn't that great? Oh, all right. Any questions on any of this? Anything at all? Because officially, we are finished. So anything there? Because silence is going to make me feel like I just puzzled you all. And I'm like, if I puzzled you all, I'm going to feel really bad. I'm going to have to take another 
another trip out of town. So someone say something. Darren, looks yes, like of course. Kyle. <laughs> what was that, Trey? Looks like Kyle's going out of town again. I know, apparently. Well, Darren wants to get ice cream. And I'm like, I'm down. I'm always down to get ice cream. <laughs> awesome. All Are right. Well, talk about your house? My house? <laughs> my house is, uh, it's, it's about dog town size, if not smaller. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a fixer-upper. So you'll get to see it here eventually, right? I mean, uh, I'll probably teach from it. Oh, I have to get internet there first. So I'll probably be teaching from random locations for a second, but the house is nice. It's, it's quaint and it's what I, what I need. I'm excited for it. It's a little bigger than my apartment, but so does, anyways, does, that, yeah. does that mean you're in St. Louis permanently? <laughs> Possibly. I'm, I'm calling it my home base. So, um, uh, yeah, it's my home base. It's, it's a small, it's what I need. It has all the amenities, but I'm still, still going to be traveling around. <laughs> I can't stay still. Oh, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I love St. Louis, but I don't know if I want to make it home. It's been home since I was born. So never know, though. never know. I'll probably get older and be like, I don't want to move anymore, which I'm getting there. All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much for hanging with me here on this gloomy of all gloominess of Thursdays. But this guy's got to go pack, so it's time to let you all go do your studio stuff. But I will see you all at E30 if you want to join. If not, it's, I, I don't take it personally. It's okay. Feel free to watch the little corny if you'd like. Other than that, everyone, have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. Stay awesome. And I will see you all back here on Monday. Safe and successful moving, Kyle.